Hello there, uh, my name is Kate Cherry and I'm here with Natalie Greenslade today. So I'm an independent consultant with Arbonne, as you know, because you're either on my business page or in my VIP group at the moment. And um, Arbonne is a company that focuses on supporting people um, to look after their mind, their body and their skin. And I was one of those people who thought I was always fairly healthy because you kind of, you know, I'm in my fourth decade. No, I'm not. I'm in my fifth decade, actually. So we go through life with getting lots of mixed messages about being what being healthy is. Um, but this business has taught me a little bit more about what healthy living really is, which is often not what people think it is. Just some slight tweaks can make a massive difference. And through the business networking I do, as our bond, but also my other business, Athena. Um, I always find that I have, we, you talk about businesses you have a synergy with or an affinity with other professions. And I always find that nutritional therapists and I tend to have really good conversations um, because those guys are qualified in terms of everything we, um, you know, our healthy living plans in our are put together by nutritional therapists, gastroenterologists, all that kind of thing. Um, but, and, and nutritional therapists, work with that as well so it's it's about um healing your body with through food really isn't it so i love to learn more about the body that mind body skin connection and i wanted to share that with you so um today with natalie who i know through um networking in london actually you're based you're based from Hill, is that it you just said uh, yeah, so, well, I'm sort of northwest London, so I cover a wide range, um, but we, we sort of met through the King's Cross group we when did. we were allowed so, to go out and meet up. So Natalie Greenslade is of Green Ginger Nutrition. So tell us, Natalie, how did you start doing what you do? What led to you, do, you being in nutritional therapy? Well, I guess I've always been interested in nutrition, right? from when I was back at school. Um, it's just taken me a long route, shall we say, to, to kind of understand where I feel my calling really is. So um, uh, I've been in health and wellbeing for over 10 years. Um, I worked for a children's charity where I uh, was going out teaching nutrition to groups, working in businesses, um, helping individuals to cook from scratch, learn basic cooking skills so that they could implement healthy eating. Um, and also to learn the basics really about how to put a well-balanced meal together. Um, but I noticed through that work that, you know, everybody's different, everybody has a different lifestyle, everybody's genetics are different. So some people don't respond in the same way. And that's then when I obviously decided to go on and um, qualify and so I trained at the Institute for Optimum Nutrition for over four years um, and I'm a qualified nutritional therapist in practice. I love it fantastic and so how long have you been set up with your current practice and who who's how do you how do you help your clients? Um, I set up my own business probably just over six months ago um, and my clients mainly are women I mean that tends to be where my focus is because I feel that women's health is not really a priority of um, our current, um, you know, sort of public health. Um, I think there's lots of areas that women are perhaps let down by a little bit. Um, and women typically um, are always busy looking after everybody else, whether it's their children, their partners, you know, parents, whatever it may be. And, and although generally women understand about well-being and want to do these you know these sort of lifestyle changes they often find it difficult because they are busy they're, they're running a job you know yourself you're running your own businesses you're running a busy family um you know how do you implement that so my sort of philosophy is it's evidence-led um solutions but they're really practical so that busy women can you know, do the things that they need to do, whether it's gut problems, hormone imbalances, they've got the practical support and coaching from me to help make sure that they can implement these in their busy lifestyles. Because if something's not sustainable, then in a way that there's no point, there's no point trying to do a, a quick fix. Absolutely. And I love that uh, the investigation work you guys do as nutritional therapists, it's not one size fits all. So with Arbonne, we have our 30 days to healthy living. That's an average mid-level, you're not feeling quite right. Let's do this and give you a blank canvas to know if there's something else going on. But for someone who might have something a bit more, um, I don't know what the right word is, maybe symptomatic, um, 
you, you guys do a lot of investigative work and, and testing, don't you? To Is it called functional testing, I think? Yeah, exactly. It's functional medicine. So essentially, we're looking at the root cause of the problem. So, for example, somebody with typical IBS type symptoms, so that might be cramping, bloating, could be constipation or diarrhea, but generally they sort of issues with the gut. Um, you know, they might go to their GP and they've tested for perhaps a, a, an irritable bowel disease and that's been ruled out. And then they're just given the label of IBS. Well, that's great, but that's just a general term for a whole range of symptoms that they don't really know what to do about. Whereas with functional medicine, we look at the root cause. So we can do investigations. We'll do a whole health review. Um, we'll look at what you're eating. We'll look at what other symptoms you have because the whole body works together. So we know, for example, with IBS or with people suffering from those types of symptoms, that there's a gut brain connection. So we know straight away that, you know, there's something there to do around stress, but then there's other things. There may be um, uh, food intolerances, for example. Um, it may be that, you know, they had some antibiotics in the past. There may be other things going on that we can deal with. So it's tackling the root cause and then working out with, because if you don't get to the source, all you're ever doing is sticking a, a plaster over the top. Yeah. It's a bit like with eczema. Okay. You can use a topical cream to get away the actual physical sign that you can see but it's going to come back because you're not dealing with the root cause which often is with the gut so that that's essentially what we do but it's one of the biggest detox detoxifying organs it's the biggest de detoxifying organ in the skin so it's it would make sense that anything going on on the skin is a reflection of something going on in the body isn't it and you're right i, I do work with a lot of people who say I've got this or I've got that and that's it and all about it and I take this for it or I use that cream and I keep having to do it every six months kind of thing and it's well isn't that a bit like banging your head against the wall the body is this incredible machine that's meant to be able to heal itself I don't think cavemen used to have psoriasis you know or the, these issues um these are things that we've had the industrial revolution um all of those we i mean synthetic plastic fantastic 70s and 80s we've had all these decades of things that we're only now understanding the impact of and yet still there is a a feeling that we go to a doctor you get a band-aid put it on and it's all good go and we move forward but um i think it's it's incredible to understand the different links between things and someone can have maybe three or four different ailments or diseases and actually to know that that it could all be linked to one underlying challenge couldn't it yeah exactly and you know the other thing that people need to understand is that as we age things begin to change as well so for example you know women particularly obviously as we age and it can be as early as in your 30s you know our hormone levels begin to change. And so as we head towards perimenopause and menopause, you know, we will have these different symptoms. So, you know, women think, oh, it's just hot flushes, but there's lots of other symptoms like brain fog, mood. You know, there's lots of women that don't realize that this is to do with the hormone fluctuations and they go to the GP and they'll be diagnosed with depression. And it's not depression. It's simply, you know, a drop in estrogen, um, the hormones becoming imbalanced. But I mean, we can support that through diet and lifestyle, um, you know, to, to ensure that women feel great as they age. You know, it, again, as we get older, some of our digestive enzymes, um, you know, don't work as efficiently. We don't produce as much, which means you're not with the best diet in the world. If you don't have those digestive enzymes, you're not going to break down foods properly. You're not going to get the nutrients from them. So again, for some people, it may be that these need to be replaced for a period of time um, so it's all these things that what you do in your 20s you do need to adapt it in your 30s 40s 50s and getting older if you want to stay well um, you know it's not just about sort of looking great with your products etc it's about being good on the inside as well so that that obviously then comes out and shows on the outside so um, you know we, we need to take all of these into account and the point is, is that it is complicated science but my clients don't need to worry about that. I deal with the complicated science and I interpret that for them and I apply it to their individual needs and their individual lifestyles. Because as you say, everyone is uniquely different and that's why we're all fantastic. But sometimes when we read things on social media, we have to realise that that may not work for us. Yeah. And therefore what we need is an individualised plan. 
Absolutely. And I'm, I love that you touched on menopause there because <clears throat> again, with schools of thought, there is, the, it's the going to the doctor. I've got the hormone treatment. We're all good. I'm working through it and I'll be on that for years. Whereas there is, I know from speaking to another nutritional therapist, there's a heck of a lot you can do yourself to manage those symptoms, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of things. There is definitely diet and lifestyle. What a lot of women find moving towards menopause as well is the fact that their tolerance for alcohol, for example, drops. Sorry to say that, but that, that does happen. Um, you know, and so in which case maybe you need to adapt that, um, you know, and there's lots of dietary things that we can take as well and implement in the diet. And there is no doubt that stress is a huge factor. You know, some women um, will do well on HRT. And I think there's a real misconception out there about HRT, which, you know, we won't go into here, but um, I am doing some social media around that because I think it is important that women understand that even if diet and lifestyle for them gets so far but then there comes a point and they still need additional support then there are other things out there as well i'm not knocking conventional medicine mm. at all but it's about not just popping that pill even yeah. if you did take hrt you still need to do the diet and lifestyle stuff as well because you know you know it is still um hormones that you're taking in you still do need to make sure that you're you know processing excess hormones out of the body so it's it's that whole sort of wraparound approach really absolutely and i, I love that the, when you said popping a pill that's not just medical for me as well it's it's supplementary as well so um we do a lot of supplements i know people who take supplements from elsewhere for different things and it's just a matter of course that they have their little pot of pills in the morning but there's no pill or cream anywhere that's a magic fix for anything. You need, you need to also, which is why we, we feel so strongly in Arbonne about, yes, I've got a digestive enzyme or an energy supplement, but that's, it'll only do so much that, and it's, um, well, to <laughs> polishing a, what's it, you know, sometimes it, it, it's layering something on top of a challenge you haven't looked into. And it's being aware that whether it's your skin or how you feel, it's not normal to feel a certain way sometimes so yeah um, no, I agree with that I, I think that's true and I think people, there's this misconception that there's all these sort of supplements protein powders all of this kind of stuff and that's all great and I'm not saying that people shouldn't take them and in fact you know I use them I recommend them for clients in certain situations but you know there will be cases so for example for example if someone's a vegan then they will have to supplement Massively. They have no choice. And there may be people with certain genetic or, or health conditions that maybe have to supplement because they're not as, the, as efficient as converting vitamin D, for example. Um, but it's taking the right things and the right things together because nutrients work synergistically together. So you can't just take one without necessarily taking something else. And equally, if you're getting a good diet and you're looking after your lifestyle and you're getting your sleep, then it may be that you can reduce some of these supplements. Not least they're really expensive. Yeah. So, you know, that's... When you get the right ones, isn't it? Because not just because something's labelled multivitamin that the ingredients are any good. It's like everything no. else. <laughs> and actually, as nutritional therapists, you tend to recommend really high, good brands, don't you, that you know how they're made? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not a case of just popping down to your local health store and, and picking up the first bottle that you find because it's on offer three for two. You know, if, if it doesn't have the right dosage in there for you and it doesn't have the right mix of, you know, nutrients that work together, then you're possibly just wasting your money. Um, yeah. you know, but on the other hand, in certain circumstances, they absolutely can be hugely beneficial so but it's knowing what you're using and why you're using it and how long you're going to be using it for yeah that's so true um someone once said to me if you're using so uh, a product for spots and six months later you're still using it clearly there's a problem <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, you know, especially at the moment when, um, you know, people are concerned about their jobs, perhaps, or furloughed, you know, why spend lots of money on expensive supplements when there may be some core things that you can do through diet and lifestyle that are also sustainable long term. So it's getting that mix. And, and as I said, everyone's individual. So we do have to take that into account. And some people may need to and some people don't. And what do you think then is uh, the most, I wrote down a question and I think we've probably covered it, but in your mind, um, because I know a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm going to go and see the doctor. 
about something and don't fully appreciate maybe the difference between a nutritional therapist and a dietitian who's attached to that medical process and, and, and quite limited in what they will talk about because it's for a particular symptom that they go to see that, that they're, they're sent someone. So what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about nutrition and the connection between well-being and health? Oh gosh, where do I start? Um, that it's complicated. I think the biggest misconception is that it's not achievable. Uh, I think on social media, I think social media is great. And I think there's some brilliant people out there, but I think also there's this sort of idea that you have to be, you know, buying king one, you have to be buying expensive products and, and you, you have to have hours and hours to do this. And you don't, you know, everything you need, you could find in your local supermarket. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. And I think it's become a little bit sort of on trend to, to make it sort of look all glitzy or you have to have, you know, a, a pure white kitchen. And unless you have the most expensive blender or whatever, and that's just not the case. You know, it, it's really simple things that you could be doing on a daily basis that make a massive impact. You know, it doesn't have to be a massive overhaul. It could be simply including broccoli three to four times a week in your diet which is in every supermarket. Um, you know, it could be adding protein to every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, in order to make sure that you don't sort of get those crashes mid-afternoon. Um, making sure that half of your plate is, you know, green leafy vegetables, um, you know, a quarter of it with some sort of uh, good starchy carbohydrate, like some sweet potatoes, for example, and some protein and fat. You know, this isn't complicated stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, when people have more severe conditions or they've got some uh you know real sort of gut issues going on or hormone imbalances then obviously my job is to to look a little bit deeper and find out what else is going on but for most people there's some really simple things that they could be doing on a daily basis not scary no no absolutely not and i think also people think oh i can i have to do this big thing so i won't bother doing it it's the small stuff that you do on a daily basis that have the biggest impact Absolutely. And um, there's a saying, isn't there? It's not you are what you eat, you are what you absorb. Yeah. And digest. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you could have the best diet, as I said before, but if you've got some gut symptoms going on um, and you're not able to break down those foods properly and you're not taking the nutrients in properly, um, then yeah, th that's where it gets challenging, which is why it's worth working with a nutritional therapist, because obviously we can look at your individual symptoms, what's going on. We do a whole assessment across the whole body. So it's not just looking at the gut. So if you were to a GP they'll probably just look at oh well you've got IBS you've got a gut problem but then we look at everything else that's going on so if you've got some um, you know memory problems brain fog going on or you've got itchy ears or you've got some skin issues or you're tired all the time or you're not sleeping we look at all of that and we can see exactly kind of what's going on and how it all links together so that you don't just yeah exactly exactly and to be fair to GPs I'm not knocking them at all they have a really limited time and it's in the title um, general yeah, yeah, exactly. So then they send you off to specialists. And the way that our healthcare system works is that you're going to see a specialist for one thing and you'll see a specialist for something yeah, else. Exactly. They're all brilliant in their field, yeah. but they're not necessarily tying the things up together. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that's, that's where we can definitely help individuals with that by looking at everything that's going on. And obviously recommending you go and see um, somebody if there's something that we really think that, uh, you know, you need to be referred to. So refer you back to your GP um, and then onwards to a, a certain specialist. But and yeah, we, we need to look at the whole body. And if you've already had a diagnosis for someone, for something, someone, someone could be watching and go, oh, it's all right, I already know what's wrong with me and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of, that you can do for easing symptoms and preventing something get, getting worse, even if you are going through treatment for something. So it is still worth getting the right advice, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for example, you know, individuals may be on medication and they possibly won't have been told that they will end up with nutrient deficiencies as a result of that. 
um, medication. So that's just one simple example where we can help support. And I used to deliver the um, NHS National Diabetes Prevention Program, which was a nine month uh, lifestyle intervention for individuals diagnosed with pre-diabetes. So that's before they become diabetic, with the idea being it's the first sort of intervention program of its kind. I mean, it's fantastic. But the idea being that we um, support individuals to prevent them going on to develop diabetes. We get them at the right point, get them to change their diet and their lifestyle, think about stress, um, you know, and that's fantastic. But there were lots of information that they still weren't being told. And some of them have very complex conditions. Um, and that's where people really do need to have the right information and they need to have the, the right support. And then it's up to them to make a choice as to whether they follow that or not. But at the moment, they're still quite limited to what they get. It may get handed over a pill and then that's it. And they're not told the, that may have side effects and the ongoing impact long-term that that medication may have. And then that leads on to taking another medication in five to 10 years time. So that's where diet and lifestyle are really, really important to help support people, whether they have a diagnosis or not, and whether they're on medication or not. Natalie, that's amazing. Where's the best place for someone to find your information? Um, I have a website, uh, gingergreennutrition.co.uk. Uh, I'm on Instagram at um, ginger underscore green underscore nutrition. I'm on Facebook as well and just about everywhere else. So, uh, yeah, so I'm easily trackable. If anyone wants to, to come along and, and drop me a line, get in touch, see what I'm up to. I will tag one of those as I post this. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time. And everybody, thank you for listening. If you have questions for either Natalie or myself, then please drop a message under this or contact us. Thank you. Thanks so much.